Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here for our daily video. So first, let's get to the topic, which if you don't know what the topics are, the calendar is down below. And while you're clicking around here, please subscribe. And then there's a little bell so that you can get the notices when the new video comes. Okay, the topic of the day is let it go. Let it go, my friend, let it go. That is to find something you can get rid of. Uh, it might be, oh, a piece of fabric you keep, you keep running into and like don't use. You know that one fabric, like you pick it up and you're like, no, still not any good. And like you've had it forever and you can never find anything to do with it and you don't particularly like it. So let that one go, get it out, let it go out into the world. Um, maybe you have some books that you probably aren't going to use again. You know, maybe they're older. You don't really look at them. You've done something in them and that's over. Uh, you might have um, a project. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You run into, as we're sort of going through our things, I'm sure a lot of you have been doing this when you're home more, you're not out doing your regular things during the pandemic. So you have been going through your stuff. And I know a lot of you have been finishing projects, which is just amazing to see all these projects, but you might have found a few that you're like, you know, I just don't want to spend my time doing this anymore. This I've, I've, you know, moved past this, this project. So maybe ask around, maybe one of your friends wants it. Uh, you might, take it to the thrift shop uh, you know hey you quilters go to the thrift shop you, somebody is going to be showing on my group look what I found at the thrift shop and it would be like your project half done <laughs> and they would be thrilled so <laughs> and you know th a lot of the thrift shops uh, they they donate their money to organizations so that's really awesome uh, all, everybody's happy in the end you get rid of it somebody else gets it there's a few pennies made along the way for the charity. Uh, so that's today. Pick something. And if like in your, if it's too overwhelming to do in your uh, crafting space, maybe you just don't have the brain power for that and you really want to do something, get rid of some clothing you don't wear. Get, go through your winter coats now before it gets really cold. You have winter coats that you're never, ever wearing. Maybe take those and get rid of them. Some old shoes. Get rid of something today. Something in your life that you're like, okay, yeah, I can get rid of this. <laughs> Speaking of shoes, I know we weren't really, but I did what I had, I had to order some new sneakers and I got them. And of course they, they didn't fit. So it's like so disappointing. So I have to send them back. They were a brand that I hadn't used before, but they were recommended. And I thought, and they were just a little too short. Like my toes were just banging up at the top. So I was like, I can't wear them. So I ordered the brand I normally get. It's one of the, uh, downfalls of not being able to go out and try on things right now <laughs> it's like ah, oh, but i need new sneakers because these are really getting they, they they compress down and then my feet don't feel good so yeah shopping shopping for clothing online because you know our, this is our our cozy clothing week for uh cozy things our huga for the week is comfy clothing so that is what you want to be thinking about and you did a lot of great blocks yesterday oh my goodness there's some really really cute combinations for the cozy things block uh, yesterday and if you missed it you can still get it the links at my i love to make quilts uh, go on over there and yesterday when i did the trimming of the half square triangles one of our friends asked me if i would do it again because I did not press the half square triangle totally over. I just sort of flipped it and then I, you know, went on. Uh, and it didn't look like it was the, the, the dog ears, the little triangles were trimmed off, but they are. And so I thought, okay, I will do it again. I even brought more tools this time. It takes me a while to gather all this stuff up in order to do these demos here. So uh, it's not, I have to make stuff and all that. So here we go. Of course, I've got white thread in here, so you just have to live with that part of it. I will trim. This is a half square triangles, two at a time. I'm using the quilt in the day, this quilt in the day ruler, which there you go. There, the quilt in the day ruler, which is linked below. And I need to cut these in half. Uh, oops, and it's not standing, which is difficult to cut when you're sitting. I find that very difficult. So here's. Here's the two of them. And I want to make them three and a half. Get it over here. So I want to go to the three and a half mark on the triangle ruler. 
Uh, it's a triangle trimming ruler, so you can see the three and a half mark. The three and a half mark goes, whoops, let me do it this way. Three and a half mark goes on the seam allowance so that I can trim the sides. So I trim one side and then see if I can do it without moving it. Trim the other side. There we go. So both the sides are trimmed. Now what I want to do is trim off the dog ears, which are these things here that would stick out. On, you can see the difference to show you. See that this one on top, this one here, is not trimmed, and this one down below was trimmed. So when you trim it, you just leave your ruler. You can leave your ruler in the same position and rotate the triangle underneath, and then <clears throat> take the line, put the three and a half on the line again, and then you're trimming these two little dog ears or the extra little triangles off so you can see them there. Now you want to press this open. So I brought over <clears throat> a little pressing mat and I brought over the little Aliso iron. So these little mini irons, these new colors are coming in. Let me just bring this. You don't want to, this, these have a silicon mat. They're not like the big ones. You have to put the little ones on the silicon mat. Uh, <clears throat> So that's how that's how they're designed. They don't have feet. See, there's no feet underneath these. So let me stick the mat over over there a second. Can you see? Yeah, it's just on the edge here. I've got my other bigger wool mat there. So to press this open, I usually warm it up. I don't know why. I just like to do that. And then when I press it, you will see that the triangles are cut off and if like there I don't have any steam I usually like steam so see, it's a little shadow if I don't get that all the way pressed open you could see a little shadow because actually it wasn't pressed flat it was still lifted up a bit okay so here we go the little triangles are cut off see they're not sticking out which on a, you know that makes it run smoother when you're in the machine so here you go. That's uh, that's what it that's what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> so I have another uh, another little uh, visual for you. Yes, is that the right word? Sounds very techy, doesn't it? A little visual for you today, um, because I am playing around with the other jelly roll pattern uh, for starting at the end of the month, uh, and I wanted to do a mock up. Remember, I said I would do a mock up of it. So we're going to do something with a jelly roll. You can cut your own strips. There was a suggestion on, uh, first of all, let me tell you, one of our friends has been working on this one and said that uh, depending on how frugal you are with your cutting, it says that you need 18 of the alternate, of the, of the color that's the same in every block, like your background color. Um, she said that she didn't need 18. I forget how many she needed. So, so don't cut them all. Just cut, you know, cut a dozen and then go back and cut more as, and, as you need them. Um, I think she used maybe two or three less than, than the 18. Uh, so that's just a little tip. So I wanted to make one of the blocks from this um, pattern, which looks like that. This is the free, one of the free patterns. This one's called uh, Railway. I like this one because it's pretty fast. You're doing strip sets and then you're sub cutting and then building a block. So mm -hmm. here it is. Here is a sample block. Ta da! <laughs> I like it. Um, it's really fun because you're doing these strip sets and then putting these, uh, then you have a set of squares that you cut in half for here and then the bigger squares you cut in half for here. But there is some alignment things, and when we get closer to making it, I will do, I'll have to go first see if Kimberly did a, a video for this block. Uh, she may have, uh, for the, she does that for a lot of theirs. I don't know how old this was. They may have just put this one out. But uh, if there's a video, I will link to it. But what I noticed, do I have it here? Yes. Okay, so what I noticed is that when you're making this, uh, you want to be careful that you don't cut off these ends 
by accident, meaning that you know they need to be centered. These triangles here, you shouldn't have one that's longer out here than this side. Um, I'll put it up here. Let me see and do this. There we go. So you can see, really see it. So when I did this, I somehow lined up on the end when I cut here. So, so this, no, when I went over here. So I started from here. This one's really close and this one hangs out. Can you see that this one hangs out and this one's like right at the edge, which means that's not even. That's not in the middle of this. So you want to be really careful when you're doing that so that you manage to get it in, you get them together and you don't, um, you know, have one shifted over to the other side. The other thing I wanted to do is I show, I, I didn't sew it, but I'll do a mock up here of using a different background. Uh, because this quilt, there's a lot of background. So you can see, you know, a lot of whatever this color is shows. So like if I'm doing this one, there's going to be a lot of blue showing. It's going to be a blue quilt. Now you could do a border. They have a border in, um, on the supply list, or you could just do it without the border. You could just stop, you know, without putting a border on it, like the picture on the front. Oh, I think that one might have a small white. That has like a border the same as the background. So mine would be blue in that case. Um, but here is the stripe. And I've decided the stripe looks really cool on one block, but I don't think as a whole quilt, at least not a big quilt, not a big quilt, maybe like a baby quilt. Like if I was just doing that size, that would be kind of cute. This would be kind of cute. But if I'm doing a bigger size like this, I'm not sure that I want all that stripe, that that just might not be what I, the look I would want. Um, here is with the, a very neutral, my, my cream color from Morrison Park. Um, Oops. So there you can see that as a background. And you could even mock it up uh, like, let me show you. You could even do a mock up on something else like here, like just, you know, put that on another piece of fabric and see what it looks like there. So this is a blossom that has, you know, some little design in it, but it's predominantly white. So that gives you a chance. I didn't sew those on there. So there we go. So those are some different ways to take a look at how you're doing that particular block. <laughs> so I hope that was good. Hope that was fun. Uh, links are down below for these things. Get your pattern, decide on which jelly roll pattern you're going to do. Start getting that jelly roll stuff out and you can start on it if you don't have anything, if you don't have anything else to work on. So I love you. Don't forget to get rid of something today. See you online.